Okay, welcome back everybody to the uh, second hour of our lecture on church and ministry administration. In this lesson, uh, so we are going to get into the next lesson. Let me just uh, share the PDF. Let me get started. We're going to talk about lesson, uh, lesson number six. We're going to talk about uh, systems and processes. So uh, basically church operations. That means uh, this has to do with the actual day-to-day -day running of the church as an organization. And um, so that's what we call, we mean by operations. Uh, how is this organization going to operate on a day-to-day -day basis? And for good operations, what we need is, we need what generally is referred to as systems and processes. Systems and processes. So system has to do with any way of doing a certain uh, task or ministry. You know, how this should happen. And the process has to do with the flow of information, the flow of uh, money, or the flow of uh, approval. You know, how does that happen within that system? So, example, we are running this Bible college. Now, within this, even this one ministry, that is Bible college, there will be many systems. Many systems have to be in place. Example, starting first is how can we inform people about Bible college? So there has to be a system there. That means uh, we have to send emails, send uh, some promotional material. We have to do some promotions. That means we are basically making people aware there is a Bible college. Uh, the Bible college offers these courses. Uh, it is located in this place, and you know, that all of this. So there has to be a system by which we constantly keep on informing people, because every year we are going to you know, have students come and so on. So that informing students. Then the next is, okay, if students are interested, how are they going to apply? So then we need another system there. You know, students will apply when they make the application. They need to know are they accepted or they're not accepted. What is the tuition to be paid? When are the classes starting? What is the timetable? The student will need to know this. So we need to have systems to take care of all of that. Yeah. Then internal. Okay. Some uh, uh, during the semester, every semester needs a class schedule. Okay. How are you going to run the classes for those three years? Who is going to be teaching what? What is the timetable? Who will make sure that you know the timetable is being run? Uh, and then for the lectures, the uh, the course notes, all those things. Yeah. So again, we need a lot of systems just for running of those those things. And then for the residential students here, you know, for them, where will the boys stay? Where will the girls stay? What about their food? What about their you know? Uh, what will they do in the afternoons? The other training that happens. Uh, how will they get field work uh, experience? All those things. So again, we need a lot of systems to take care of those things. So, just one ministry. Uh, in this case, Bible College, one ministry area. There are many systems in place, right? And uh, and between these systems, information has to flow. That means. Okay, if promotions are happening, then the website has to be ready with the application form and all of that, and that data has to go into the database. So the IT team has to be informed. Uh, our people in the office have to be informed because they may get calls, they may get emails, they may get messages, uh, inquiries. Uh, so they have to be informed. Uh, and then when students are, uh, you know, uh, enrolled, People, uh, the people inside here need to know, okay, how many students are going to come on campus? 
how many students are residential. So we need to have norms for them, all those things. So if the information also has to flow between these systems. So everybody knows what need what needs to be done and uh, so on. And if there's any problem in any system, we have to give feedback. Hey, that is not working. So people are going to be affected. Students are going to be affected. So please fix that or something, you know. So so uh, all that. So there is so you can just think about it like you know, if you see this this uh, chart here. In, in an organization, in, the, in this case, we're talking about a church or a Christian ministry, there are many different ministry areas. We just put six boxes here to represent six ministry areas. And within each ministry area, there are lots of systems and processes happening. Information is flowing, approval is happening, money is flowing, etc. And actually, uh, these ministry areas are also connected. You know, they're all belonging to one organization. So the information is flowing even across ministry areas. Yeah. Um, and uh, so there's a lot of interaction going on. So the important thing is when we are thinking about the administration of the organization, we need to break it down to the lowest level, which is the systems. This putting the right system in place for every little thing that needs to happen. Yeah. and the process you know so how will information flow or approval process or money you know money uh, flowing uh, so we have to think down to the lowest level and we have to make each system and each process efficient it should work well so that the overall organization will then function well and also people can be served well. Yeah. So down to the lowest level, we have to monitor, we have to check, we have to give feedback, we have to make correction so that every system and process is optimized. It is working very well, it's working efficiently. Then everything will be going well. Yeah. So um, we have to think like that. Think down to the lowest level of every system, every process, keep checking. Is the system functioning well? Is the process working well? And then, you know, that way the whole ministry area and all the ministry areas within the organization will do well. Okay. So let's look at some examples. Accounting department. Okay. So on this is on page uh, 19. So think about just accounting. So accounting is one ministry area or one department. And within that, there are so many systems that have to be in place. Now, um, we are very grateful that uh, a good portion of contributions that come to the church come directly into the bank. So it saves us a lot of work. So we are encouraging more and more people, instead of putting money in on Sundays into the offering, please, you make your contribution directly to the bank. So that may, it reduces all the work. But think about it, you know, like, the, but there is still uh, the offering that people give physically on a, during the service, like on a Sunday service, they put it in the offering bag. But let's talk about that system right so the offering collection which in in, in time past maybe you know uh, six seven years ago that was the main way of getting offerings which is what the offering people make on sunday morning in the offering bag so we have to have a very tight system in place so okay during the sunday service at a particular time offering bags are passed so you know we pass the offering bag no, we have to think about the offering bank. We want money to come in. We don't want people to take money out. <laughs> so we have to have some security measure. Right? So our offering bags have locks on them, or at one point we use boxes. Well, boxes have to lock on them. So only money can go out or checks can go. I mean, money can go in or checks can go in, but it cannot come out. Right? Only authorized people can take it out. 
So that we had to think about. That's part of the whole system. So offering banks are just faster, no? People put their cash or check into the offering bank. Then it's all collected. And the offering bag goes to, uh, there are, there, you know, it goes to the back, back where it's kept safe. Then as soon as the service is over, right there, so the system we have put in place is right there, there is a team of people who will sit and count the money. And it will be done in, you know, it's not done some secret place or something. It is done in right there in public. Public means it's not everybody is standing and watching, but it's done in a way that nothing can go wrong. You know, it's done in a, in such a place. So, and then it's done by a team. So it's not done by just two people. Right? Uh, maybe if it's small, yeah, maybe two people, but usually it's done by a team of people. So all the money is, uh, the locks are opened when everybody's there. The, all the bags, okay, all the bags are there, all checked. Locks open, check. All the money is put there in front of everybody. So there's a team of people watching. Then the money is sorted by denomination in all hundreds or fifties or thousands or whatever. The denominations are separated. Then it's entered into a notebook. So um, this you know, currency, currency in this denomination, we got so many currency. So it's all recorded, checked. Then two people sign off. Then that cash is put into a sealed envelope or envelopes. The amount is written. Then that cash comes to the church office. Then in the church, and they send a copy of that sign, that recorded sign. So there's a logbook in at the venue where it is recorded. A copy of that is sent to the church office. The church office, again, in the, on Monday, they will check the whole thing. And it should match exactly with what was recorded on Sunday at the venue. You know, okay, how many, the denomination, so many notes, this, so many notes, it matches. So that's part of it. So once that is done, the same thing goes to the bank. And the bank, again, you're entering so many denominations, so many. So this one, the gift deposit, that's left. So all three records should match the record of the, of what happened at the venue the counting that happened in the church office and the deposit that took place in the bank, all three should match. Then we know money has gone from the venue to the bank. So that's the system we have. And this is recorded. That means all copies of all three are kept for the accountant, independent accountant to check. So that's the system. Now, in spite of having a system like this, I'll share one experience that, um, and this happened many years ago. One day, one, oh, I think it happened on Monday, um, somebody from the church, and this happened from one of our locations. So we had the same system in place. We had like five people counting, everything being done. But somebody had given, uh, made a large amount contribution to, to, to the, put, put it in the offering. And they just had the presence of mind for whatever reason. They called the church office and said, I have put, and I think the amount was 50,000 or so, Indian rupees. They called the church office, uh, they informed the ad administrator saying, I have put 50,000 rupees in cash into the offering today could you please make sure that it has come they just had that normally people don't do that they just put in the offering and they go but this person called the church office to say i have done this so okay fine we will check and we will let you know and they told us the denominations you know like i i don't remember all the details but this is what we have put we have put so many and uh, uh, so many currency notes in this denomination, and we put that amount, we put it in the offer. Okay. 
and uh, monday you know so then, so then we waited for the so then we saw that that certain notes of that denomination are missing they were not recorded in the beginning that means they were taken out before they were recorded itself and this was happening in a group of five people sitting how can it happen so then i had to call i uh, call the uh, so every team we have a leader so i called two people who were in the group uh, in the counting offering counter group i said you know can you please explain how does this thing happen here because we have set a process in place where the packets have to be opened to get the but how is it happening then they said oh no 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 uh, they mentioned the name of the person and said no this lady she takes all the envelopes to herself first and she does not let anybody else open the envelopes she insists that only she will handle it and she opens and she puts out the money and i said that's not the way it's supposed to happen everything has to be in the middle and in front of everybody it has to be opened this is not the system we are, or the process we have set in place immediately the alarm alarm bells because this lady is not following what we have told and she has changed it she has modified it to suit herself and everybody is quiet because they think she has been there the longest and she actually was there before all of them so they are all just keeping quiet and listening to her but she has modified this process to suit herself where all the envelopes go to her first and then she puts it out and then we realized what was happening that because she alone is opening she can keep some of the notes and not put all the notes in, in front so even before it is counted there is some notes can be taken and that's exactly what happened that sunday because uh, the denominations that 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 people said we have put did not come from the venue to the church office so i called this person i said uh, can you please come and meet me i need to talk to you then she got scared she said what is it about pastor you know what do you want i said you come and talk to me i i just want to talk to you please come and meet me then she she was very scared can you please tell like you know she she wanted to know what it was then i told her straight because she was hesitating to come and meet me i said see this is the problem i want to talk to you that was it she disappeared she left the church she and you know she was coming with her family they all just left the church stop coming now if her hands were clean she would have come and spoken directly and said please what happened she would try to solve the problem but the the fact that she didn't even come to meet me and the fact that she didn't want to even solve the problem or she leave and stop coming to church was a clear sign that something wrong was happening and there she was you know exposed like we didn't now we didn't take any action against her uh, we, we had to let it go but the point was the point is even though we had a system in place <laughs> and we thought it was as tight as it could be possibly and we had the process in place somebody knew how to beat the process <laughs> find a way out and steal money you know now the next thing we did when we were in that location was we said okay now everybody sit under cctv and do it you know so at least we have camera cctv camera recording everything so people are aware that hey while i am opening the envelopes and so everything is being recorded on camera so that's what we did you know in that situation so uh, the point is you know this this was a very 
difficult lesson to learn that hey even after we've tried so much and put a tight system in place everything still somebody and that lady was in church uh, i think you know by the time at least at least uh, seven eight years you know now, of course she was not always serving in that uh, play team but she had been in church for the, a long time so there was an amount of trust you know like this person is with us for some such a long time we don't expect somebody like that to be doing something wrong and then she eventually joined this particular offering team offering recounting team and then started this thing so we became very very careful uh, Ah, yeah, I mean, the person who called, we had to thank them for telling us. But, you know, the fact is that, you know, the money is gone. Uh, uh, but we can't uh, recover it because this person has left. And we don't want to, you know, create a scene going after them and police and all that. Um, I mean, it, 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 not the whole amount, the 50,000 didn't go fully, but I think uh, maybe, like, uh, if I remember correctly, I mean, I can't remember the details, but maybe like around 10,000 or something disappeared. Yeah, the is called it, and we don't know that. Correct. So we want to order so many times. If the person, that's right. So the thing is, we don't know how many times this person was repeating this before. Right? That particular Sunday, thank God that he orchestrated the thing to be exposed. Doesn't mean to that person again. Well, it's still yeah. yeah. So if that person had not called, <laughs> this lady would have continued her activity. And it was uh, it was very sad, but we have no record, and so and we can't, you know, we there's no way to involve the police and or uh, do any such thing. So and, and she just left. So uh, it's a very sad situation. Anyway, so the 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 important thing is um, uh, that. Uh, you know, we, so we need systems, we need processes, and we need to keep checking on these things. Yeah. So um, uh, similarly, you know, we have a process it, within within the accounting department. There are systems and process on you know how we do expense claims. That means if somebody you know has to spend some money from their own pocket uh, to buy something. Uh, we, we have a way how to do it and how they can get reimbursed. So it's there and people will follow that process, how salaries are paid, how vendors are paid. So for example, for vendors, uh, especially for vendors who are going to be you know, re doing repeat business, we have, first of all, uh, a vendor services agreement. That means uh, if you want to do some work, we, we first, you know, get quotes from multiple vendors. Uh, we choose the right vendor. And we get the vendor to sign a vendor services agreement with the church. And in that agreement, uh, we state basically, uh, uh, you know, certain things like uh, everything has to be done with integrity and, you know, this is how we work. And that vendors cannot pay money to any staff in order to get the work. See, otherwise what happens is the, the staff who's making the decision may choose certain vendor and say, hey, I will choose you. I'll give you this work. You give me some amount. And, and we won't know, you know. So we have this vendor services agreement saying, I mean, of course, we trust all our staff, but, uh, you know, we don't want any opportunity to anything go wrong. So that's why we have this in place. So we get the vendor to sign the agreement that they will not do any such you know, wrong activity. They will not pay any of our staff any money in order to get the contract or get the work. And then once they do that, uh, they become a regular vendor that we keep using on an ongoing basis for, you know, for different things. And, uh, and our, our practices, every vendor gets paid within three days. So that means we don't wait 30 days. That within three days, so as soon as they send us their bill, the 
within three days, three working days, we will pay them. So that it makes them happy, but also means that we are being responsible. You know, that, uh, you know you've served us, so we will pay you immediately uh, as quickly as possible. So all of these things are there in just one accounting department, there are lots of things happening. And we'll get into some details when we talk about uh, church accounts and how we manage that and some practices we follow, uh, we get into the details. So when you look at the human body, even the human body is so amazing and there are so many systems within the body. So one body, just one physical body has, uh, I think these are the 12 different systems there. There is the circulatory system, how the blood flows, the whole thing. So there's a heart that pumps the blood, the arteries that deliver oxygenated blood, the veins that bring back the oxygenated blood, and the whole body is functioning, uh, nutrients are distributed, everything's happening. Uh, there's a digestive system, the endocrine system, the uh, exocrine system, the immune system or mus muscular system, nervous system, uh, renal system, reproductive system, respiratory and skeletal. So if you just look at the human body itself, even this body has so many systems and the system within the system, there are various processes that are happening over and over and over and over again, repeating, 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 and that's how the body is function. So it's a good, you know, model. The same thing has to happen in the organization. The organization is repeating so many things are happening over and over again. And if the systems and the processes work well, uh, the organization will do well. Okay. So uh, what are the objectives we're trying to achieve in putting a system and process in place? Uh, we want to work in a very efficient way. Uh, people uh, will be, need to be clear what they have to do and how they have to interact with others. There's a good uh, control of uh, flow of information, resources, finances, and time. And uh, we can also look at ways to keep improving the system and the process so we can get better as an organization. Now, a very important thing is this, that the way we set up systems and processes, uh, it should be in such a way that even if people move and somebody new comes in, it should work fine. It should not be dependent on the people in the sense that uh, if one person decides to leave, or move to another role, uh, things should continue to happen, you know? And uh, the fact is people will move. Yeah? People after some time they say, I want to change, I want to do something different, I want to go into another ministry, or I want to, you know, whatever, they, they will move. People are not going to be there forever. So the system should be designed in such a way that if another person with similar skills comes in, work should get done, right? So of course, the skills belong to the person. You know, people are coming in, this, their skills, their experience, their wisdom, they're bringing. But people can also move. They can go to some other role. So what do we do? If another person comes in with similar skills and similar experience, work should happen. So it should not be too dependent on the person. So we have to design our systems like that and uh, make so that the work can go on. So here are some thoughts on good system design. Uh, we should design things, uh, the system for with these four things in mind. One, excellence. How can we do things better? Um, what do we need to do the, to improve quality? That's another question we can ask. Efficiency, like how can we do it more productively? Can we do it faster, um, effectively? Uh, could we make some changes uh, to the approach we are working so that uh, 
we can be more responsive. Third is economy. Can we do it cheaper? We don't want to waste time or money or people's energy. Can we do it in a less expensive way? Uh, can we, uh, are we wasting, so we had to ask, are we wasting resources here uh, without adding value, so on. And fourth is, can, how, what is, can we improve the system that gives us an edge, that makes us, that we are doing something that's different, uh, or it's meeting a need that is not yet being met. So can we be innovative? Can it, it help us, you know, solve problems, meet needs? So these four things we keep in mind. Excellence, efficiency, economy, edge. So when we look at systems that are happening now, we can ask question, hey, uh, is this really working well? Is it excellent? Is it, or can, can we do it better? Is it working efficiently? Is, it, is there economy in it? Are we wasting any money or time? Or are we, and uh, are we you know, doing, can we do something to meet more needs or to give us an edge? Uh, in, in, in what we're doing. So if you ask these questions constantly, we keep asking these questions, we can improve uh, system design, uh, we can keep getting better in how we are doing things. Um, so some thoughts to keep in mind is uh, keep it simple, lean and minimalistic, don't make it very complicated. Make sure the right people are in the right place. So if you put somebody there who doesn't have the skill, doesn't have the required thing, experience, it'll become a problem. The system won't work <laughs> because the person doesn't have the skill or they're struggling. So the work won't get done. Uh, we need to evaluate and give feedback and uh, make it independent of people so that uh, even if people change, the work continues. And remember, even if, even if we improve one ministry area, it's not going. It doesn't mean we, the whole thing will improve. We have to keep improving all the ministry areas. All the ministry areas have to keep constantly getting better. So, just look at one example here on you know how we think through on this. Uh, this is about uh, how. Uh, requests, and uh, I'm looking at the diagram on page uh, 21, uh, uh, how the requests come in for books. Right? So uh, a book request can come to us uh, through many different ways, through email or phone call, somebody writes a letter. Uh, it's, uh, it could be at a book table where we are displaying our books uh, in some uh, event. Uh, or uh, somebody could just speak to one of our church staff and say, please send this book to me or something like that. So the request comes, so what should we do? We need to record it somewhere. So uh, there is one person who's primarily responsible to record these book requests in, uh, in a, right now it's happening in a shared spreadsheet. So you know, the request is recorded. The name, who requested it, what is the address, what are the titles, language, how many copies they need, uh, by when do they need it, you know, so that we make sure, especially if somebody's requested books for some conference or something, uh, we need to make sure the books reach there for the conference. So that's the question. Then we have one person who's responsible for book distribution. So he looks at these requests every day, and then uh, he is also uh, so his immediate thing is, of course, to pack the books and dispatch the books, and then to mark that this request has been completed. That's that's his immediate work responsibility. But he also has to make sure that we have enough books for the stock. So on a monthly basis, this person is providing a stock update. 
on a monthly basis and we have a rule if any book comes down to just 200 copies immediately it has to go for reprint unless we need to print another 2000 copies or whatever that is so we need to have a minimum stock of 200 copies uh, in the stock at any point if it starts getting close to 200 print so that we get a few thousand copies back into the stock so he gives a monthly inventory update so that uh, the requests for printing can go and then these books come into the stock room but sometimes uh, the requests that come in for example if somebody's doing a conference somewhere in some other part of the country and they need a huge large number large volume of books at least send us thousand copies of these these, these books so that you know we may not have that many copies then so then immediately he'll send out a request directly a conference is happening you know two months from now they have requested for thousand copies of all these books so we need to print for that so then so he that he doesn't wait till the end of the month to make the request he will immediately request it because the books have to be ready to be sent to that conference so that uh that so we have a system and there is a process that is involved or many processes involved but this is just to meet the request for a book so whether it is one person sending us an email saying send me one book or whether it is you know some big event that's happening where they have requested thousands of books everything has to be met and we have a two week uh, we said within two weeks the book has to leave it has to be sent practically we'll try to send it within that week but maximum two weeks if a request comes to us within two weeks the book has to be sent uh, and of course for conferences we send it you know a few days before the conference happens so that the books are received and given to the participants so this is one example where many systems are needed with processes in them to carry out that particular ministry area to make sure it works well if we don't have that system we don't have the process just printing books is of no use <laughs> because it won't reach the people you know? and uh, when somebody requests a book if it doesn't go to them uh, they will miss out on something and or if you look at it this way, when they request a book and the book goes to them, God can minister in their life you know, through the book uh, and bring about a change. So uh, we need to do this. And then we constantly keep looking at this. How can we improve this whole process? Uh, if there are delays, sometimes delays with a printer and so on and so forth, we need to we, we constantly look at it, keep monitoring it, keep changing. For example, after COVID, when we restarted one big problem at that time was buying paper the printer came and said you know i, I and we use a particular type of paper like you know this color it should be white and it's just this thickness he said that paper is not available i can't buy it so it became a problem yeah. and then at that time he got it he was able to source it through some you know another person was selling third party he got that then that that whole batch of paper got over then he came back to us he said see i know somebody uh, who has the paper we need but they are willing to sell you know they they sell it in big tons tons of paper. so if we have to buy that paper we have to buy i, I forget the numbers now but so many tons of paper and it costs so much money and the printer asked us can you help us help me buy that uh, and so we had to make a decision yeah because anyway it's for our good like you know, that even though uh, it's a big amount huge volume of paper uh, and he's asking us to buy it we will buy it but it's going to be used for us to print on the books and uh, so we went ahead you know we because of the situation is okay we'll buy all that tons of paper it'll be delivered to the printer 
but we will use it. And then, you know, uh, uh, for all the printing work, he deducts the amount. So we kind of collaborate that way uh, because, you know, we're coming out of this whole COVID thing and uh, all of this things have to be done. So those those things, you know, but the end result is, you know, the books get printed and they're sent out to help people. Um, uh, so even when once, I'm going to close with this, that even once we put a system and put the process in place, we have to continually monitor. And the one important thing is to collect data. That, because we need to make our decisions based on actual data. You can't just say, uh, you know, if you don't have data, then um, we may not be able to make the right decisions. So we try to tell them, okay, how many books went out? How much time is taking from the request to the book being dispatched? If the request date was this, the dispatch date was this. With this, is it happening within two weeks? You know, so that is actual data. Yeah. We can see that yeah, we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, so like that, we have to we collect data then we can see that yeah, things are working well or things are not working well. Uh, we need to analyze results and then we need to correct what needs to be corrected and then repeat it. So like this, we have to do it in all areas of the ministry. Collect the data, look at the result, make the change. And uh, sometimes the change may be the process, sometimes the change may be the person. Because maybe the person is not doing the work that they're supposed to do, then that has to be dealt with. And so we need to monitor and take action. So here's just some exercises that you can think about if you want. If you're going to set up a traveling ministry, you know, what systems and processes would you need? If you're setting up a Bible college, you know, what systems, processes you need? Just some things to think about. Let me pause here and see if there are any thoughts, any questions, anybody wants to ask anything or share anything about systems and processes. Any questions? It runs okay? Yes, Pastor. Okay. Fine. All right, so I hope uh, this has given you some useful things to think about for your churches, for your ministries, uh, from an organizational perspective, administration perspective. Um, if there are no questions, no comments, we will close in prayer. Yes, yeah, so I see Colin's comment. Uh, monitoring and evaluation is very important. That's true. We have to look at data, collect data, first of all, and then monitor, evaluate, and take the, the required action. Yeah. Okay. Let's close in prayer. Um, we will. Uh, Pray and we will dismiss. Uh, could somebody in the online class pray and then we will close? Anyone can pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful lesson, two hours we've had, Lord, about leadership and church management, Lord. We all know that any anointing without training is chaos. So, Lord, let us try as much as possible to put everything we've learned into practice. To always use both our physical and spiritual ears to, to hear whatever has been told to us. So, Lord, we also pray for the pastor. Please increase his anointing. Increase the anointing of the students we are with in this class as we change this entire world for Christ. I do pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and everybody says it's amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We'll continue this next week. Thank you for being on the class. Have a good day. See you soon. Bye now.